Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. I'm here to talk about the new features in uh, Photoshop CC and I had to share this with you. This was not imported by a third party 3D program. This was all completely done in Photoshop CC utilizing nothing more than the tool that most Photoshop practitioners hate or dread, the pen tool right there. So the pen tool created this entire phaser. Uh, now, as you can tell, I am a Star Trek fan, and um, I'm more of the uh, original series. I really, I really liked the original series much more. I thought the um, the sets and the even the phasers were a little bit more unique. And um, so I challenged myself one day. I thought, you know what? If I can actually build this phaser in Photoshop CC then people might take the 3D aspects of the program a lot more seriously and let's kind of take a little closer look um, at the phaser itself now I've got divided up into several actually sections now I'm utilizing the pen tool and also another new feature in Photoshop CC which is our ability to group 3D objects now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cascade this up so you can see exactly what I have done. In the in the um, the 3D panel, you will see several 3D objects here. Within these folders or in these objects are multiple objects. So here is my my beam angle adjustment and so forth. Phaser type one, phaser type two. As you can see, it becomes highlighted. Let's pull back so you can see a little bit better um, what's being highlighted here. So the type one is the phaser that connects to the type two, which is a smaller one that's sitting on top. So I can go ahead and, and click off the eyeball on that one. That will disappear or reappear as we choose. Let's go to type two and do the same thing and you can see what 3D objects are actually placed within the type two. I have the actual power pack which is right down here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the eyeball off in that one and we have the power pack of the phaser. Everything here was done with the pen tool and I'm going to show you exactly how and let's actually start with the emitter here. Now if I want to actually you know target a 3D object to be actually viewed over here within the 3D panel we can just tap on it and automatically in the panel let's go ahead and bring up the properties very quickly and pull this down so you can see everything it jumps to the location where it is now as you can see it's inside the type 2 and in a subfolder called nozzle and there's the nozzle itself if I turn off the eyeball it's going to go away and if we turn it back on now take a look at this blue little outline here let's get in really close in fact let's turn the eyeball off on, on the phaser or I tell you what we'll leave it on since we have a little bit of a RAM um, um, issue there and this little blue line will actually show you the actual path that I drew to create this particular object so let's go into the object and edit it and see exactly what I did now with the emitter targeted, let's go back and get our properties panel. And if we go down to the properties, we can edit the source. So let's edit the source to actually see um, you know, how I created this particular shape. There we are. So I just I just targeted the edit button. Let's go ahead and zoom in closer. It's placed, you know, per, you know within the area where the, the nozzle was sitting, but this is it. Let's go right over here to my pen tool or the, the the path area target the um, the black arrow which is going to actually highlight the complete path take a look at this so I can come over let's get the direct selection tool let's get in a little closer and let's say for example I want to put a, put a little bit of extra detail on here let's target the pen tool and I'm going to add some more points and right along the nozzle I'm going to add kind of a little circle here so target it here I'm adding more points I'm going to add another one next to it, give it a little spacing, target another section, and then target another point. So I added four more points, primarily because if I grab the direct selection tool and grab this section right in here, I can pull this out. So I can pull these handlebars out a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pull it all the way out so we get a nice pronounced effect. Now, 
I'm going to go to the Windows menu, Arrange, and let's go ahead and arrange this vertically so that we can see them side by side. All right, I just want to make made some modifications here. That looks about pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit Command S, and let's watch what happens. There it is. So, um, using all of my vector tools allows me to actually update my 3D objects. Let's go ahead and hit the F key and, and, and fill the frame with this one. There we are, so we can see this a little bit closer. All right, so let me give you, uh, share with you uh, some techniques on how I apply vector shapes to create any types of shapes that you want, and, and particularly uh, some of these here. Whenever creating 3D objects natively in Photoshop, always use some type of a reference, and that's exactly what I did. I used blueprints. Let's go ahead and turn off the phaser temporarily. Come down to the bottom, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually turn off everything. There we are. Okay, so here are my blueprints right here. So we can see the left side view of the phaser. You can see the actual shape of the body that I utilized to create the phaser. And you know, and just as a reminder, let's go ahead and turn that back on. Go to the 3D object, the phaser is targeted. Now notice that this little blue outline around the um, circumference or the around, around the edge of the body of the phaser represents the vector shape that I created. So with the shape two targeted, come on down to the edit source under the properties and target it and there it is okay so I have a tendency to make this a little light because I wanted to see the the vector shapes a lot more accurately let's go ahead and bring up the opacity a little bit more okay so right there so you can so you can see that's my shape extruded it out that was the basis of my phaser body I'm gonna hit command W to close it out so I don't need to look at it anymore so uh, once again now utilize these blueprints and I have a top view I also have the blueprint for the for the phaser type one let's go right down here to the blueprint folder and turn that off and turn this on and you can see there's the top view and the front view and the side view of the of the type one phaser okay so hopefully this uh, tutorial has given you some ideas for um, custom creating your 3D objects natively in Photoshop CC from vector tools, okay? All right, so I'm Stephen Burns. I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to um, sharing more creative insights in future videos.